Hey everyone, welcome back to IT Samurai Teacher. My name is Shah Abdul. Today we are diving into something bit more advanced. How to enable root access on your Raspberry Pi 5. We'll walk through the why it's disabled by in the first place. It's disabled. The root access is disabled on your Raspberry Pi 5. So when you might need to enable it, and of course, the step-by-step -step process to get it working, the root access, super user count. So let's jump in right now. Uh, first of you might be wondering why is root access disabled by default? Well, Root access gives full control over the entire system. Essentially, God mod on Linux. It's a super powerful, but it can also be dangerous if left wide open, especially if someone gains unauthorized access to your Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 4, 5, 3, anything, right? So that's why the Raspberry Pi OS, like most modern Linux distributions, disable the root access by default to protect your system. So what will happen when the root account is enabled, anyone who knows or guess the root password can do pretty much anything, everything, including deleting files, changing settings or installing malicious software to your Raspberry Pi. So by disabling the root access, Raspberry Pi OS ensure that even if someone gain SSH access, they won't have full system control unless they know a separate user password. That's awesome, right? So when you might you actually need to enable the root access? That's the question, right? Why I need to enable the root access? Oh, what the purpose I want to enable the root access? Well, in most cases using sudo with your regular user account, like my user account or my name, whatever the user account, user account you have, should be enough to handle administrative task, but but there are some advanced scenarios where you might need direct root access. You know, I can give you uh, three simple uh, scenarios. The first one is system maintenance. So when you need to perform a low level system maintenance, okay, uh, that requires direct root access. The number two, custom software. Uh, certain software installation or configurations might demand root access to work properly. Number three, uh, troubleshooting. In, in rare cases where sudo doesn't give you the necessary privileges, especially when troubleshooting system critical issues, that's why you need the root access. So, but, but remember, with great power comes great responsibility enabling root access should only be done with absolutely necessary and you should disable it after for secure reason yes once you enable once you enable what you done with your stuff and you should disable it afterward for whole this secure reason these days everyone trying to hack you so whatever you do enable do what and disable it again. That's how you protect your uh, your Raspberry Pi system. Okay, enough talk. Let's jump into my Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, whatever the Raspberry Pi you have. So it's going to work or any version of your Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty sure for 3, 4, 5. I'm not sure about the, the, the older version. So now I already log into my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to do a I'm going to show you something quickly. So I enter this command. I'm going to show you. I'm going to type ls uh, dash l etc shadow, right? So let me explain you uh, what is this. Uh, so you can see uh, ls uh, dash l slash root. Okay. 
I'm going to get some information of our, uh, about the root access account, the root account. Now the first uh, in the results in the first you know this one okay indicates a regular file then after that we can see rw dash um, means the owner's root has read and write permissions means the owner root has read and write permissions and after that we can see r there's a two dash dash okay means the group shadow has only read permissions Shadow has re only read permissions. And after that, we can see one, two, three. Okay, three dashes. Means others have no permissions. Others have no permissions. So after that, we can see number one in here. This indicates there's only one hard link to this file. Hard links are like multiple names for the same file. Right? So after that, we can see a root in here. So this is the owner of the file. It's a super user account on Unix like systems, including Raspberry Pi OS. After that, we can see shadow. So this is the group the file belongs to. The shadow group is used for system security purposes. And after that, 1044, this is the file size in bytes. And after that, uh, the date, this is the last modification time of the file. Uh, actually, today is Saturday. I put here because my system is uh, changed. So actually not the date I'm working on. Today is on weekend. And after that, uh, this is also uh, like a secret uh, you know, thing I did. I changed the date and time. So anyone who tried to guess when I work on so they say this is the date but actually I work on a weekend okay this is I, I have free time so it will show you a different time and date I work on so also security you know we can uh, manipulate the hacker when we work on now after that we can see slash etc slash shadow this is the the file part the etc slash shadow is a file is a critical system file that stores encrypted user password information so now let's take uh, key takeaways right the etc dash slash shadow file is owned by the root user and the shadow group the only the root user has written right access to this file this is a crucial for system security is as it prevents unauthorized access to sensitive password data the file was last modified on september 2024 and the time right that's a also very important when the uh, system is changed when you, you know so once you know the time and date you know okay okay i didn't touch this when this was changed right so this output confirms the existence of the root user on your system and is association with the critical system files it also highlights the importance of the file permissions and maintain the system security okay that's enough now i'm going to do a clear this uh, now think that you uh, log in as uh, SSH to your system. So first, we need to log into your Raspberry Pi using regular account. Like I re use my regular account, my user not the ro root account. So if you connect remotely, open your terminal or command prompt button and SSH to your Raspberry Pi. Enter your username and IP address. Okay. So once you logged in. Uh, we're moving on to the setting the root password okay so now next is we'll assign a password for the root user this is done by using the pass wd command with sudo privileges so let's do this you're going to type sudo um ess wd root so I'm going to, so you'll be prompt to enter 
confirm the new password for the root account make sure to choose a strong password since this will have a full control over your system so i'm going to enter password now mm, let me see oh you know what first i need to enter my password my user account password my bad my bad now so now we enter the old password for my user account this is enter the password for my user now we are going to uh, enter the new password for the root account i'm going to enter retype okay so now we update the password okay i tested so uh, we change the root password like we enter new password and we change the password so that's fine now the next step is if you want to enable root login via ssh we need to modify the ssh configuration file this is this is optional and i recommend only doing this if you absolutely need remote root access okay now we're going to type sudo oops yeah, typing we're going to type sudo and we're going to say nano etc ssh sshd config now look for the line that says permit root login prohibited password this is the default settings meaning root login via ssh is not allowed change this line to uh, permit root login yes will will we have access okay now let's go ahead and uh, look for the permit root login let me see permit root login no, you can see in here you can see in here it says permit root login prohibited password Hmm. Okay. Okay. So what we need to do here? Permit login. Password. We not do permit. Uh, permit root login. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to uncheck. Uncomment this. This is comment. So that's been disabled. So we're going to enable. You can see if it's white, that means it's enable. So what now we did that change it permit root login to yes. You know what? Let me. You know what? I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to say no first. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to create a new one. Because then I know what was the default one, right? Because I, I want to put it back again. So I'm going to type same one, permit root login, and I'm going to say yes. So now I know I create a duplicate, but it's enable permit root login, yes. So we need to save the file, control X, and now I save the modified buffers, we type Y, yes. So after that, it says uh, file name, right? So we don't type anything, just hit enter. That's it. Okay, next what we need to do is now for the changes to take the effect, we need to restart the SSH service. So we're going to run this command, sudo systemctl restart SSH. Okay. Now, Let's test if root login works. If you are testing the same machine, you can just use the su command to switch to root. But if you are doing it remotely via SSH, try logging as a root using the new password we just set. Okay, so I'm going to uh, keep this. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to open new tab. I'm going to open. so normally when you do SSH, you type your name my user so this time i'm going to use root 
okay so we are root now i'm going to enter the password which we set up oh look at this uh i'm going to show you uh is something totally different the white screen so normally if you logging as a your regular account so a little bit different right um because this the colors you can see the color regular account color is changed in here it's just white um root account so last login date is the my regular account last login date okay but root because the first time i'm logging as a root so that's why i don't have any any time or date or anything so other than that everything looks same okay but i don't know about the if you go to the terminal probably uh, same colors but if you ssh from remote machine uh this is little bit different the colors and the you don't have the time but if you logging as a root uh, previously you will see the time stamp so we can identify i logging as a root for first time for my system okay uh that's it we have successfully enabled the root access on the raspberry pi 5 just remember root access is powerful but can be risky if not used properly use it only when necessary and always disable it or lock it down when you are done now the next video i'm going to create i'm going to show you how to protect your system from the root access that's me i'm going to disable the root access disable the password and disable every root access privileges if someone try to hack you because if you gain root access password that's you are done i mean they can do so many things to hurt you uh, feelings your uh, raspberry pi devices so the next video going to be very crucial that's i'm going to show you how to you know protect from the root access so please subscribe to my channel hit that like button and stay tuned i'm going to show you next video how to protect from the root access your devices so stay tuned and i'll see you next video